We just read 19. We're going to be reading 20 and 21, which would mark the end of the book of Judges. Yay. 19. I just cannot. There's a lot of books in the Bible where I'm just like, cannot. And uh, I try to make sure that I don't pass judgment on the books either. But at the same time, I can see why the world had to change. I do think it's funny that people try to keep it like this. So. Then all the children of Israel went out, and the congregation was gathered together as one man, from Dan even to Beersheba, with the land of Gilead unto the Lord in Mizpeh. And the chief of all the people, even of all the tribes of Israel, presented themselves in the assembly of the people of God, four hundred thousand footmen that drew sword. Now the children of Benjamin heard that the children of Israel were gone up to Mizpeh, then said the children of Israel, Tell us, how was this wickedness? And the Levite, the husband of the woman that was slain, answered and said, I came into Gibeah that belongeth to Benjamin, and I am my concubine to lodge. And the men of Gibeah rose against me and beset the house round about upon me by night and thought to have slain me. And my concubine have they forced that she is dead. I'm reading back and um, and my concubine have they forced I just cannot and I took my concubine and cut her in pieces and sent her throughout all the country of the inheritance of Israel for they have committed lewdness and folly in Israel. Behold, ye are all children of Israel. Give here your advice and counsel. And all the people arose as one man, saying, We will not any of us go to his tent, neither will we any of us turn into his house. But now this shall be the thing which we will do to Gibeah. We will go up by lot against it. And we will take ten men of an hundred throughout all the tribes of Israel, and an hundred of a thousand, and a thousand out of ten thousand, to fetch victual for the people that they may do when they came when they come to Gibeah of Benjamin, according to all the folly that they have wrought in Israel. So all the men of Israel were gathered against the city, knit together as one man. And the tribes of Israel sent men through all the tribe of Benjamin, saying, What wickedness is this that is done among you? Now, now therefore deliver us the men, the children of Belial, Belial, which are in Gibeah, that we may put them to death and put away evil from Israel. But the children of Benjamin would not hearken to the voice of their brethren, the children of Israel. But the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together, out of the cities of, unto Gibeon, Gibe, uh, to go out to battle against the children of Israel. And the children of Benjamin were numbered at that time out of the cities twenty and six thousand men that drew sword beside the inhabitants of Gibeah, which were numbered seven hundred chosen men. Among all this people there were seven hundred chosen men left-handed, Every one could sing, sling stones at an hair breadth and not miss. And the men of Israel beside Benjamin were numbered 400,000 men that drew sword. All these were men of war. And the children of Israel arose and went up to the house of God and asked counsel of God and said, Which of us shall go up first to the battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. And the children of Israel rose up in the morning and encamped against Gibeah. 
And the men of Israel went out to battle against Benjamin. And the men of Israel put themselves in array to fight against them at Gibeah. And the children of Benjamin came forth out of Gibeah and destroyed down to the ground of the Israelites that day twenty and two thousand men. And the people, the men of Israel, encouraged themselves and set their battle again in array in the place where they put themselves in array the first day. And the children of Israel went up and wept before the Lord until even, and asked counsel of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up again to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? And the Lord said, Go up against him. And the children of Israel came near against the children of Benjamin the second day. And Benjamin went forth against them out of Gibeah the second day, and destroyed down to the ground of the children of Israel again eighteen thousand men. All these threw all these drew the sword. Then all the children of Israel and all the people went up and came into the house unto the house of God and wept and sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until even and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And the children of Israel inquired of the Lord for the ark of the covenant of God was there in those days. And Phinehas the son of Eleazar the son of Aaron stood before in those days, saying, Shall I yet again go out to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother, or shall I cease? And the Lord said, Go up, for tomorrow I will deliver them into thine hand. And Israel set liars in wait round about Gibeah. And the children of Israel went up against the children of Benjamin on the third day, and put themselves in array against Gibeah, as at other times. And the children of Benjamin went out against the people and were drawn away from the city. And they began to smite of the people and kill as at other times in the highways, of which one goeth up to the house of God and the other to Gibeah in the field about 30 men of Israel. And the children of Benjamin said, they are smitten down before us, us they are smitten down before us as at the first. But the children of Israel said, Let us flee and draw them from the city unto the highways. And, the, and all the men of Israel rose up out of their place and put themselves in array at Baal Tamar. And the liars in wait of Israel came forth out of their places, even out of the meadows of Gibeah. And there came against Gibeah ten thousand chosen men out of all Israel, and the battle was sore, but they knew not that evil was near them. And the Lord smote Benjamin before Israel, and the children of Israel destroyed of the Benjamites that day twenty and five thousand and an hundred men. All these drew the sword. So the children of Benjamin saw that they were smitten, for the men of Israel gave place to the Benjamites, because they trusted unto the liars in wait, which they had set beside Gibeah. And the liars in wait hasted and rushed upon Gibeah. And the liars in wait drew themselves along and smote all the city with the edge of the sword. Now there was an appointed sign between the men of Israel and the liars in wait, that they should make a great flame with the smoke rise up out of the city. And when the men of Israel retired in the battle, retired in the battle, Benjamin began to smite and kill of the men of Israel about thirty persons, for they said, Surely they are smitten down before us as in the first battle. But when the flame began to arise up out of the city with a pillar of smoke, the Benjamites looked behind him, and behold, the flame of the city ascended up to heaven. And when the men of Israel turned again, the men of Benjamin were amazed, for they saw that evil was come upon them. Therefore they turned their backs before the men of Israel unto the way of the wilderness. But the battle overtook them, and them which came out of the cities they destroyed in the midst of them. Thus they enclosed the Benjamites round about, and chased them, and trod them down with ease, over against Gibeah toward the sun rising. And there fell a Benjamin 
18,000 men and oh, all these were men of valor. And they turned and fled toward the wilderness unto the rock of Rimmon, Rimmon, and they gleaned of them in the highways 5,000 men and pursued after them unto Gidom and slew 2,000 men of them so that all which fell that day of Benjamin were twenty and five thousand men that drew the sword all these were of all these were men of valor but six hundred men turned and fled to the wilderness unto the rock Rimmon and abode in the rock Rimmon four months and the men of Israel turned again upon the children of Benjamin and smote them with the edge of the sword as well as the men of every city as the beast and all that came to hand also they set on fire all the cities that they came to i have sand in my butt and it's like little inconspicuous pieces of sand and they've been bothering me the whole way that i was walking here in a way that is just making me crazy. So currently my hand is just all in my pants. Thank God I have a shawl. Wow, I forgot this was even in my pocket. Conditioner. Speaking of which, I was gonna take a lotion break because I put lotion on and my hands are less dry than they would be if I didn't try. Definitely. When I get annoyed by a book, like a, like a book in the Bible, it's like my brain kind of just shuts down in its own way. Like there's just no excitement for me reading this right now. And in the way of like messages are coming to me in different ways because uh, we are psychic. But at the same time, I really try my hardest not to judge this daggone book when certain things happen. And I believe it is because as the divine feminine, I think it is really interesting because people really do talk about how God loves women in the Bible in so many different ways. And I'm glad that we learned how to see that as well um, because on our first to second run through I, I don't believe that I see any speak of that too much I guess if you really know what you're reading that's true so we've been able to see that but what also points out to me is things that I'm just like why was that okay to do why was that acceptable and that comes you know for like man or woman because back then if you were a feminine energy, you were a woman. And if you were a masculine energy, you were a male. At least that's what they want you to think. But um, that was the main, the main thing right there. That is why um, being gay was a sin. And it was because it was an abomination at the time. Like it was like, this is what we built you for. But in this world now, we've changed so much. And now we have knowledge of what love really is rather than oh this person bought me and now we're in love and this person pleased me also I'm gonna have like five other wives oh I hate this wife but I just I cannot even right now I think about these things when I'm reading them because, you know, obviously that they're meant to be read, they're meant to be questioned. I think it's funny that people want to be in this situation just because it's in the Bible, just because it was of old, like people want to keep themselves like that. And even though this is the Old Testament, it doesn't matter, like people still really need to understand that it happened but we're here now and even though god doesn't change he doesn't change in love he loves his people you can i can always see the love of the lord but i can see how he does things a lot differently nowadays than he used to like if you questioned him back in the day 
you better question him to his face and be like, can I have a sign? Can I have like seven signs? And he'll be like, all right. But like now it's like, if you question him, he'll show you the answer, but you may not still believe him, which I believe that he, he, he thought it was fine because moving forward, he had more to show us. But like in here, you die, except for the children of Israel. They really got a lot of chances. He's very merciful in that way. And I believe that since we ate the fruit and had no goddess energy, we weren't given that power by him because he didn't plan on giving it to us in the first place, even though that was a test in the beginning. I believe that we didn't even know, we weren't developed enough. We weren't developed enough to even know what it meant to be a god or a goddess at all. Like, I try not to say this on camera, but I say it to God all the time. Everybody in this book is really stupid. Even uh, King Solomon, he was an idiot. God gave you everything, but yet, and, and including all the wisdom of the land, nobody wises, wiser than him. And yet, he still chose to worship other gods and die. I feel like I'm too tired to get into this right now. Hold on. <sighs> now the men of Israel had sworn in Mizpeh, saying, There shall not any of us give his daughter unto Benjamin to wife. And the people came to the house of God and abode there till even before God and lifted up their voices and wept sore. And he still had mercy on Solomon. I just want to point that out. He still had mercy on him. And the people came to the house of God and abode there till even before God and lifted up their voices and wept sore and said, O Lord God of Israel, why is this come to pass in Israel that there should be today one tribe lacking in Israel? And it came to pass on the morrow that the people rose early and built there an altar and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. And the children of Israel said, who is there among all the tribes of Israel that came not up with the congregation unto the Lord? For they had made a great oath concerning him that came not up to the Lord to Mizpeh, saying, He shall surely be put to death. <coughs> and the children of Israel represented, repented them for Benjamin, their brother, and said, There is one tribe cut off from Israel this day. How shall we do for wives for them that remain, seeing we have sworn by the Lord that we will not give them of our daughters to wives? And they said, What one is there of the tribes of Israel that came not up to Mizpeh the Lord, to the Lord? And behold, there came none to the camp from Jabesh, Gilead, to the assembly, for the people were numbered, and behold, there were none of the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead there. And the congregation sent to the... Twelve thousand men of the valiantes and commanded them, saying, Go and smite the in valley the inhabitants. Goodness gracious, go and smite the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead with the edge of the sword, with the woman, women, and children. And this is the thing that ye shall do. Ye shall utterly destroy every male and every woman that hath lain by man. And they found among the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead four hundred young virgins that had known no man by lying with any male. And they brought them up 
And they brought them unto the camp of Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan. And the whole congregation sent home to and the whole congregation sent some to speak to the children of Benjamin that were in the rock Remon, and to call peaceably unto them. And Benjamin came again at that time, and they gave them wives, which they had saved alive of women, Jabesh Gilead, and yet so they sufficed them not. And the people repented them for Benjamin, because that the Lord had made a breach in the tribes of Israel. Then the elders of the congregation said, How shall we do for wives for them that remain, seeing the women are destroyed out of Benjamin? And they said, There must be an inheritance for them that be escaped of Benjamin, that a tribe be not destroyed out of Israel. Howbeit we may not give them wives of our daughters. For the children of Israel have sworn, saying, Cursed be he that giveth a wife to Benjamin. Then they said, Behold, there is a feast of the Lord in Shiloh, yearly in a place which is on the north side of Bethel, on the east side of the highway that goeth up from Bethel to Shishim, and on the south of Lebanon. Therefore they commanded the children of Benjamin, saying, Go and blight and wait in the vineyards, and see and behold, if the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance and dances, then come ye out of the vineyards and catch you, every man his wife of the daughters of Shiloh, and go to the land of Benjamin. And it shall be, when their fathers or their brethren came unto us to complain, that we will say unto them, Be favorable unto them for our sakes, because we reserved not to each man his wife in the war. For ye did not give unto them at this time that ye should be guilty. And the children of Benjamin did so, and took them wives according to their number, of them that danced, whom they caught, and they went and returned unto their inheritance, and repaired the cities and dwelt in them. And the children of Israel departed thence at that time, every man to his tribe and to his family, and they went out from thence, every man to his inheritance. In those days there was no king in Israel, every man did that which was right in his own eyes. I feel like I want to talk about something, but I don't know how much I want to talk about it right now because I feel like I got to be slightly fired up in order to speak about it the way that it should be spoken about so if you want to challenge me on it do so because then I'll be in a better space to say something more about it so everybody else is able to see how God talks about certain emotions and you know like they say like emotions in the in the Bible are discovered like spoken of differently but if you really yeah they i don't know they pretty much see it as it is right and um damn is that in the divine feminine path i'm really here to challenge the bible it really is like that it's not challenge but it, it was challenge at first uh we had a notebook is gone with the wind right now so somebody will find it out there um so you'll see what we wrote down it is really like this bible was a guideline at the time but if you'll notice how god would speak to people as opposed to how he would speak to people now and how he how like everything that is written in here this is a very masculine based book this is a very masculine divine masculine type based book and i don't even really mean divine but if uh, in order to not take any type of status away from it specifically um this is this is the divine masculine book right everything that you see on the outside things are spoken of as they were not as they were felt and if something was felt it was briefly spoken about it wasn't really dwelt upon too much like what I was saying about wives and stuff, I thought it was very interesting that somebody, a holy man, a holy man, in the eyes of the Lord, holy, would have a wife that he loved and a wife that he hated. And God would bless that woman, the one that was hated with a, with a wife, or with a child, my bad, and not bless the other one. And they never really spoke of why they did that. And yes, that can be seen as showing mercy on all of God's children, but really, 
not one person in this book really takes into account of how people feel about things. It's like the emotions. There are a lack of emotions going on in this book. I don't care what you say, what what type of because uh, there's always you know how like they have like if you if you're feeling this and this and this you can go down and read this and and you know there are certain things that make you feel better. But really, if you think about it, a lot of it is because the Lord said so. And so people don't really question it too much, which is fine. But now, where does that get you? I'm married to this person. We've been married for years. Uh, divorce is a sin. But do I love that person? Is this person happy with me? I have many wives, but are each one of them happy? Not do you think they're happy? But are they all happy? Are they all fulfilled? Do, are you fulfilled? Do you feel like you need to bring more of that into your life, more wives into your life? And that's something that I really think about. And I'm really just reading that often because it really is about women. And then all of a sudden it's like women are, are, are so important and stuff. And I can see how since I'm, I'm putting it together since women, feminine energy specifically, are meant to bring you to the light and whatnot. Um, I understand how, linking back to the Bible, that they were treated certain different ways. Like he literally gave his concubine to people that were going to attack his house and his daughter, who was also a virgin. He gave those women up in his life. Like they were just to save other people. And yes, in the book of Lot, they do that too, which is funny because I didn't know that it was in Judges. I didn't remember the story. So like it happens as if it's okay to give someone that you brought into your home, into your life, away to someone that will hurt them. And then he had the audacity to tell her when she got, when he walked out of the door, get up, let's go on our way. You know what happened to her. and. They didn't even speak about the daughter coming back. It was just the concubine. She came back and she was dead. And he literally was like, get up. Get thee up and let us go on our way. And the rest of Israel really cried for her, but no, but he didn't. You're supposed to protect the people that are in your house. There's no valiancy there. There's no, there's none of that. And I'm pretty sure none of these men held the doors open for their wives. Chivalry is dead in this book. And I don't care what anybody has to say to me, but at the same time, I would love to, ha I would love to hear what you have to say about that because that is, that is something. Uh, we're going to read the first chapter of Ruth as well to end this reading. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Malon and Chilin. Malin and Talon. I don't think they're spelled the same though. Uh, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah, and they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Ophrah, and the name of the other Ruth, and they dwelled there about ten years. And Malin and Chilion died also both of them and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband and then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of moab for she had heard in the country of moab how that the lord had visited his people in giving them bread wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her and they went on to they went on the way to return unto the land of judah and Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go return to each her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. 
The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters, why will ye go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb, that they may be your husbands? Turn again, oh. Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have an husband. If I should say, I have hope, if I should have an husband also tonight, and should also bear two sons, also sh should also bear sons, would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would ye stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again, and Orpha, Orpha kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people, and said unto her gods, Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee, for whither thou goest I will go, and where thou lodgest I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, I, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. So they went until they came to Bethlehem, and it came to pass, when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them, and they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me? So and Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. I don't want to have to edit this video.